Hello, I'm Diego Sebastian. And yes, this is a hat because I just woke up and I didn't do my hair. So, I'm going to tell you about vectors and all the chapter 9 of the book, which is our vectors. So, what is a vector? Well, a vector is this. It's a magnitude that has a direction. It has a initial point and a finish point. Alright? Vector is different from a scalar. A scalar is just a magnitude, like the uh, temperature in the room or the pressure in the atmosphere of the Earth. Right? And a vector could be uh, the velocity, the acceleration, a force, anything that has a direction is called a vector. There are many types of vectors. Uh, like this, those are equivalent vectors where A is equal to B because they have the same <coughs> magnitude and direction but those are different because they have the same direction with different magnitudes those are different too because they have the same magnitude but different direction and the last one is this they are also different because they have different magnitude, different direction ok? so let's continue with this how do we know the length of a vector? the length is the distance that goes from the initial point to the finish point so, First of all, or all, we have to know that A, or vector A, is composed by this A1, A2, and A3 and those are composed by the coordinates of the initial point and the finish point so, P0 is equal to X1 J2, J1, and C1 um, the finish point is X2, Y2, and C2 alright <coughs> A1 is composed by X2 minus X1 A2 is composed by Y2 minus Y1 and A3 is composed by C2 minus C1 and the formula to get the length of the vector the total length is by a little theorem of Pythagoras no, sorry, Pythagoras theorem yeah <laughs> is this the absolute value of the absolute value, value of all vector A is equal to the square root of A1 power of 2 plus a2 to the power of 2 plus a3 to the power of 2 ok? so let's just give a little example with numbers ok <coughs> let's just give that p0 is 4 0 and 2 and P is 6 minus 1 and 2 ok remember x1 y1 c1 x2 y2 and c2 ok so x2 minus x1 6 minus 4 uh, minus 1 minus 0 minus 1, minus 0 and 2 minus 2 2 minus 2 and uh, we get 6 minus 4 is 2 to the power of 2 plus minus 1 minus 0 minus 1 to the power of 2 plus 1, 0 to the power of 2 which is 0 ok so now we just solve this and 
we get square root of 2 of the power of 2 is 4 plus minus 1 to the power of 2 is 1 and this is square root of 5 this is the length of our vector a yeah easy isn't it okay so our next part uh, is from the 9.2 which is inner dot no what yeah inner dot and is given by this theorem where a dot is important the dot at x is a dot b is equal to the absolute value of a and the absolute value of b times the cosine of our angle all right as long as a and b are different from zero okay uh, a and b is given by this a dot b is equal to a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 <coughs> why do this serve? why can we can do with this? well I uh, will give you a little example where we get the work done by a rope carrying a car. Okay, so oops. Okay, so let's go like this. Pretty close, pretty fucking close, sorry. This is our equation where the absolute value of P, which is equal to the weight of the car and where it's well the weight of the car is y and x uh, it actually doesn't exist in this case because the rope this is a rope uh, are holding the car so the car is not moving so p is equal to zero and minus fifth thousand y minus the same the work is being doing in the negative so of the or y so minus one minus five thousand and d well here d doesn't exist because again the rope is working to hold the car so there is no no movement no direction so we have work is going to be equal to p the absolute value of p cosine of our angle yeah okay the angle is not this this is not our angle this is a ramp or pendant where the car are moving but the angle we want is this one the angle we get from where the car is well, from where the work is working how do we get this? well if the ramp is 25 how we have to get the angle if we get the 90 degrees minus the 25 degrees that is we already have is 65 degrees so work is going to be equal to absolute value of p which is 5000 5000 cosine of our angle which is 65 degrees so if we do the math 
we obtain that the work done here is equal to 200 113 pounds yep okay next topic vector product and uh, no you know the same as inner dot of a vector because this is represented by this p is equal to a times b as you can see it's an x not a dot and this means that the absolute value of b is equal to the absolute value of a times b times the sin of our angle <coughs> why does this uh, is useful well with this we can get a surface and b is going to be equal to a times b which means we can use it to get the surface the area of a plane and also the volume how well easy just use the triple scalar product and the triple scalar product will go like this b is going to be equal to oops, b B1, B1, C1, B2, B2, C2, A3, B3, and A3. This is how we get the volume of our object. And how do we get each one of these uh, components, well, we are going to get our figure, which is going to be something like this. Okay. These are our points or coordinates. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, now here. These are our coordinates A, B, C, and D. And those are our vectors, the distance between the, the coordinates or points. So to get A1, it would be equal to. So this is A, this is B, and this is C. Okay, so A1 is this point, is this line, so A, B, which we get by this, B minus A. Remember B minus A are the correct, so if A is X1, G1, C1, and B are X2, Y2, and C2. C is going to be X3, Y3, C3, and D is going to be X4, Y4, and C4. Then we just uh, uh, make the rest of the values of B minus the value the values of A. And B is the same. B is this, B, A, so why A are going to go first? Well, A is going to be our pivot. So, I'm sorry. B minus A and Z, which is this. Again, is no. C is 
Sorry, I just <laughs> I confused myself. Uh, AC that is equal to DC minus A. That's how we get the values of the component of triple scalar product. Then we just uh, get the determinant. If you remember, I wish I do remember in the last quiz. This, this, and we use this. Oh, sorry. Okay, I really hope you can understand me because I really need those extra points. This, and determinant of this, then this, and determinant of those, and the finish is this, determinant of this. Now we can get the volume of our plane, or 3D plane. Alright, so the first example is a circle. Circle. I'm going like this. Here. T is going to be equal to zero. And here. T is going to be equal to pi. So, here t is equal to half pi, and here t is going to be equal to 3 and a half of pi. And uh, we know that t is going to go from 0 and to 2 times, 2 times pi. And we wait. Our formula that we like is x to the power of 2, y to the power of 2 is going to be 24. We know that r t is going to be equal to 2 cosine of t to the power of 2 plus 2 sin to the power of sin t of 2 to the power of 2. And we just have to put the values of t in our equation. So when t is zero, when t is zero, we get two cosine of zero to the power of two plus two sin zero to the power of two, and we get this two and zero. When t is half of pi, we get zero, two, and so on and so on. So these are how we get a unitary unitary circle. Now, with an ellipse, it doesn't vary a lot. It's mostly the same. We just change the structure of our figure, you know, ellipse and circle, and we do something like this. Alright, this is again. <sighs> okay, so. How do we get the vector function for an ellipse? Ellipse. Well, you see as this. Oh, you're complicated to see, to see. I hate my handwriting. This is our function. And it go now we already know that uh, if we want the uh, wait 
Dus dat zijn we. Zijn we goed genoeg? Power 2 plus power 2. We weten dat cosine of t to the power of 2 plus sine of t to the power of 2 is going to be equal to 1. 1. So, the, all of this transforms to this. We just represent the values of x and y and a and b, and we get 1. Only if our equation is this x to the power of 2 plus y to the power of 2. And next, and let me stop from this, they are a straight line. Straight, wait. I'm really sorry if the street is. It has <laughs> bad orthography, but I don't remember how to write straight, and I didn't write it right in my notebook. So, this is all print. C, X, and Y. D is going to be A. See, this line is no, this point is A, capital A, line is going to be L, and this distance from L to A is going to be B. Okay. Um, let's go on to say that B is our unit vector, so B is equal to this. 1 and 1. Oh, cool, it is actually done. 1, 1 and zero because it's work uh, you can you can't see here but it's bit working y and x plane so that's why the zero here and t is going to measure the distance distance between l and a L and uh, wait L and A and we are going to use this formula. Here T is going to be equal to A plus T B and this is going to be represented like this. Here T is equal to A one plus T B one. A2 plus T B2 and A3 and A3 plus T B3. Okay. Um, no, no, let's just give it uh, some value of a. Let's go to say 3 and 2. Why don't input the 0? Because again, it's just working in the second plane. But okay, 0. 3, 2, 0. And we call it that this. Here, t is going to be equal to. Wait, no, sorry. Here is going to be equal to. 3, 2, Zero plus t one one zero, and this is the same as t times t t t. This is three two zero times t t and zero. So we we know that. Going to be there. Three plus this. Three t. 
two, close T, and the next one is zero. And this is going to be the distance between L and A. So you move. Uh, this this theorem uh, talk about the, the the representation of a certain point in in a plane, how the the point uh, comport itself. So the rule says we have an object here, and this is our interest point. Okay, this is going to be U V. What is a uh, UV? Well, uh, it's just uh, uh, where the point is represented in, in, in the real world. Just going to say it like that. And this is for 3D plane. And here is where this object exists. This is our domain. The domain is everything the the object uh, is, and our point is uh, over here. Uh, remember, it's just a, a little example because I know it's pretty damn ugly. Ah, and what does this theorem says? Well, it says that wait, I may want to move out of surface. The coordinates in the plane of this point are going to be. x times u v the point in the uh, real plane y times u v and c times u v this is how the point is colored this is their coordinate and we represent by partial derivative We use derivative and it's the same as always how the point works, but this is a, a value that says. What is the the value between this point and uh, sorry and this point? Okay, v is our distance, and this is x zero y zero. Uh, why only three, two variables? Because it's a 2D plane, okay? It's a, just a simple 2D plane because it does have our vector works in just two dimensions. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have this. Um, <coughs> the way we get uh, this, look what the, in the plane is, is said, is by this function f of x0 plus y h y0 plus k and c plus 1 this minus this okay. 
why I'm working uh, see here and in W where this is just an example. It's obvious that if we don't have a C, then this uh, is worthless. But uh, it's just uh, so you can you can use it later if if you want. And all these can be resumed in this little equation. As I said, this little equation with the rate. Partial derivative. So that's our the theorem, those are the equation we use. I'm not going to make it the uh, I'm not going to go further with those because there are still other subjects we, we have to see. Uh, so I'm just going to to see gradient. Gradient. Let's go with this equation. The training is equal to this. Or again, uh, derivative. Always we are going to see derivative. I really don't know why. I'm not a very fan of derivative, but we have to use it because apparently we are engineers. And we have to use the bit and intervals are not that cheap. That's how we represent the gradient. And why do we use gradients? Okay, so again, a little, little example. Okay, so oh sorry, this is this is an S. <laughs> and S is the distance we have from the point P to the point Q. Okay. Uh, what gradient gives us is the the rate of change, how how or or vector. Works how how our vector works. Uh, we are going to we use it to see this part. This is how our work vector will work in in a period of time, in a period of force, in a period of everything that give give it a, a movement. Okay. So. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, a little, uh, a little uh, number, uh, numeric sample to to see how we get the the derivative. Is like we have uh, this function. Three x to the power of two. No. Two x to the power of two plus four x. Z plus three. This will exist when we have a limit that go when S got X tends to zero and we have a function of 
the point Q minus the function of the point P over S. Okay, so now I'm going to to try to explain. Uh, example word I forget when the direction is given by a vector. This this work when there are no directions. We no. This work when we don't have any vector. Okay, we have to apply this this formula. But when we have a vector, this change a little bit. Everything of this change a little bit, and it becomes a little easier to get or write it. This is going to be equal to one over the absolute value of a vector a. This is a, a is going to be the vector the problem will give us. times again a times the uh, the gradient of our function I'm really sorry I have to work like this but this is a <laughs> the window where we can see where because uh, uh, that is really, really dark. So, now I'm going to explain this with a little example. Uh, I'm going to erase uh, all of this. And uh, yes, this too, I, I will, I will uh, write it again in a little while. So, we have a problem where that tells us that f, or function f, is defined by this value 2x power 2 plus 3y2 plus z2 z to the power 2 okay we have a p a point p where it's for 1 0 and 2 remember x Y, C, and they actually hold on. I just made a mistake. Damn it. P is two, one, and three. Again, X, Y, C. And they give us a vector a. Remember, a is going to be our vector. The go this one zero minus two. Okay. First, we are going to get our range of our function. And we have to make the derivative. Why don't we do so big damn big? Ah, okay, we have P and A. So now we have the gradient of our function and we have to derivate. The derivative of these are 4x plus the rate of these are 6y plus the rate of this is 2 see this is our gradient function and we have to use the formula I already erased that is d is equal to 1 over absolute value of a dot a times the gradient of our function we just have to replace this, that is the function P. First, and we are going to get this part. We already have this. So what we have to do is multiply our value of P times our brain of function, which is this times P. OK. 
Okay. V times P that give us uh, 8x, 6y, and and 6c. This is the same as this. Okay. Now we can start working. This will be equal to 1. The absolute value, or the absolute value, we get it like this. 1 to the power of 2 plus 0 power of 2 plus minus 2 to the power of 2 dot um, again a dot 1 0 2 times this 8 6 x 8x 6 y and 6 C. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm already running out of space. One over the square root of five. No. I have to vote a new. Uh, Times this, so is 1 times 8 is 8, 0 times 6 is 0, 2 times 6 is 12. And we just have to make our uh, equation is 1 times this, and 1 times this, and 1 times this, go 8 over square root of 5. We already know this is zero. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, this is minus. Yeah, minus, 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 minus twelve square root of five, and this is a little fraction, and we just have to solve it. Mm, here. Okay, we already know this is the same denominator, square root of 5. 8 minus 12 is minus 4. This is our answer. We can solve it, so it gives us minus 1, 1.78 9. This is our answer of our gradient. Yay! Okay, um, the next th uh, subject is a uh, divergent. Of a vector. Divergent of a vector. Uh, what the, the this is, well, the divergent is where the two points doesn't have any income, okay? Don't collide, don't, don't touch. They're divergent, they go to different uh, directions. So here we have our plane. This is our plane, and this is our of our, our object Okay, here is our point, and as you can see, it differs from, from our plane. It doesn't work in our plane. That is what uh, this theorem says. 
and as always a little, little bit to the formula the equation of V is going to be equal to the derivative of V1 on the okay well partial derivative I sorry partial derivative everything are partial derivative <coughs> and uh, how does do we get this? Well, it is just the, the multiplication of for partial derivative and uh, the point, the component of our vector v. So it's something like this. That's how we get uh, this little formula. We have to multiply each one of the partial derivatives for the components. And now that we got uh, these, we have to maintain the bit. Uh, a little example now. Just a little one because I have a class in a while. So, um, if we have this, if p is equal to 3xc, 2xy, and yc to the power of 2, we are going to have that this. Okay, in our plane, in, in all plane, is I'm going to write it uh, down here 3xzi 2xyj and jck. These, these are V. And now we got to have the divergent of this, which is the derivative. So, 3c plus 2y plus 2jt. Okay. Uh, this is this. And this is the dependent between our points. Okay? Well, how do we get this? Well, uh, the derivative of x is 1, z, we take it as a con constant, so 3z, 2xy is the same, and we have to take these two over here, over there, and we have to raise 1 in, uh, in, our uh, in our power, and we get that equation. This is not actually not that difficult, which is good because there is only one more subject, just one more. So let's go to this fast. And the last subject is. Okay. Here we have. As usual, I don't know. we have to get or component of, of uh, the core, which is V is equal to you know, V1, V2, V3, and multiplies or 
coordinates x, y, and c, and this gives us uh, b one x, b two j, and b three c. And we know that x is uh, the i, j is the y is the j, and c is the k. So this turns to be same as this. These are equivalent. And to get from this the core of a vector field, we have to get this equation. of rain time V it's a little matrix that go the partial derivative of X the partial derivative of Y and the partial derivative of C and here we want to have the components of with this we get oh it's a, uh, I don't have any more room so I'm, I'm going to erase the top part and I'm going to write how we uh, we get the formulas from this okay so this the derivative of b3 and the derivative of y minus the derivative of b2 and the derivative of c plus Plus a bit of B2, bit of X minus a bit of B3. Oh, sorry, B1, a bit of Y. So if we have that I want to press this and this because I want to make a little little quick sample like this if we have a V is y two x z zero we want to get our formula so Remember the matrix. That go like this. And we have just to apply what I already erase. Done. Okay, let's just going to use a little memory and a little and a little notebook. So um, we get the uh, remainder of the little bit of this is one. The rate of this is two C and obviously zero is just zero. Okay, so we got the rate of v3 zero example uh, it was one i just made it right this x times to the power of two okay 
and the derivative is 4x. And here we have just to make it 0 minus 4, remember the derivative, i plus y or 1, whatever you want, it is of oh, weight. This one minus oh sorry <laughs> this is a trick because here we have zero uh, j plus one minus no four minus one k and we have minus four i plus one this is like a j one i one j and three k this is the code of our equation uh, okay, hold on. <coughs> okay, so this is the core of our question and the last subject of our chapter 9. So, I guess this is all. I really hope you like the video. Uh, you know, like and share, subscribe. And I will see you the next time I need uh, two extra points, which probably will be uh, the next week. See you around.